This is an exquisite luxury SUV, and there's a good chance you've probably never even heard of it. It's the Genesis GV70, and I'm gonna tell you all about it in this review. So like and subscribe, and let's get to it. The Genesis GV70 range is pretty simple. There used to be a diesel model. It's just been axed for 2024. So now there's a choice of two different petrol engines or an electric version. I'm gonna cover it in this review as well. All right, so starting at the bottom of the range, it's the 2.5T and it's available as a rear wheel drive or all wheel drive for a few grand more. You don't really see any huge difference in terms of performance or specification between the two. It's just that you get all wheel drive sure footedness if that's what you need. Now, when it comes to the standard specification, it is comprehensively equipped at the base level, this car. So you get 19 inch alloy wheels, LED headlights and daytime running lights and auto high beam lights. And on the inside, you get full leather interior trim. You get a panoramic sunroof, plus there's heated and cooled front seats, electric front seat adjustment. You've got a 14.5 inch touchscreen media system with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto connectivity. Just keep in mind though that it is wired not wireless because the car has built-in sat-nav that's something that Genesis and Hyundai hasn't seemed to figure out just yet uh, so it does have sat-nav with augmented reality as well though so it's kind of neat the sat-nav system in this car this one is the high grade model and it's got all the packages you can get. So it's the 3.5T, comes as standard with all wheel drive and a big powerful V6 turbo engine. So yep, it has the go-go juice. And it's also got a few extras over the entry level models, including 21 inch wheels, but this one has the sport pack and the luxury pack. So it's got different 21 inch wheels. It's got a few other features that you will appreciate, including heated second row seats, a 3D look instrument cluster, head up display, a 16 speaker sound system, there's a heated steering wheel, and it does feel like a properly luxurious car. Although some people might not be a huge fan of the blue and red trim, but there are other interior trim options available. And at the very top of the range is the electrified GV70 EV. So that's a fully electric version of this luxury SUV. It comes with 445 Ks of EV driving range, heaps of power and torque though. It's the fastest model in the lineup. And it also comes with basically all of the spec as standard for that model. And it would want to, to justify the lofty asking price, more than 125 grand before on road costs. So yeah, it's not cheap. So what are the best alternatives to the GV70? So officially this is a luxury medium sized SUV and there are some really, really good alternatives in this segment if you are looking for this type of car. So firstly, I would recommend that you check out the BMW X3 and the fully electric iX3. So the iX3 looks just like a regular X3, just happens to have a fully electric powertrain. And there are a bunch of different variants available across both the X3, which is petrol and diesel, and the iX3, which includes a couple of different EV models too. So there are plenty of choices for you there and it's a really nice luxury SUV inside and out. Another car that really does stand out is the Lexus NX. Now it's got a pretty diverse model range as well. You can get it with a turbocharged petrol engine or a hybrid model or a plug-in hybrid model. So there is a step there. If you aren't ready to go full electric, then you can choose a plug-in hybrid and maybe uh, hedge your bets on the future of the technology when it comes to these sorts of cars. Look, it's a pretty expansive range and it's not necessarily expensive, which I think is what appeals to most buyers when it comes to the Lexus NX. Rightio, so what about something completely outside of the box? Another mid-size SUV that does things differently is the Cupra Formenta. So there's a bunch of really powerful petrol options, including a Golf R-Spec all-wheel drive powertrain, which is all about speed and performance. And at the top of the range, there's also a plug-in hybrid model. Now the plug-in hybrid, like I said, with the Lexus NX does things a bit differently because it allows you to have EV driving range when you need it and a petrol engine as a backup for those longer trips when you are, well, maybe outside of the city limits. So it does offer a couple of options for you and it costs a whole lot less than this. So it could be a really easy to justify decision if you are looking to go, well, partly electric and you don't wanna spend heaps and heaps of money to do it. So, which one would you pick? Any of those or something different? I'd love to hear from you. 
I'd love to know what you think about the styling of this car, but I think it's beautifully proportioned. This is a relatively normal sized car for a mid-size SUV. It's just on 4.7 meters long, but the way that the lines all pull together really does make it look like well, something a bit more substantial, but it's not huge, which is great for your garage, for your wallet, and also for parking. I'll show you a little bit more about that later, but first let's see if it's got a big enough boot for you and your family. And interestingly, that's the boot button there. It's kind of neat. So electric tailgate, as you would expect on all grades. And there's a clever system that will sense if you have the key in your pocket, it'll beep a few times and open the boot for you. So you don't have to muck around doing the silly kick thing that never works. So the boot space in here is actually pretty good. You'll see the figure on your screen now for the petrol version. Keep in mind though, if you choose the electric one, you do have a slightly smaller boot to contend with. And also if you buy the EV, you don't get a full size or temporary spare tire. You just get a tire repair kit. Um, in the petrol versions, underneath the carpet and underneath this section here, there is a space saver spare wheel under there and a really nice little clever spot for your cargo blind as well. So it is a practical space for a family SUV. You do have a few tie down points on the sides. And if you ever need to knock down those back seats, there's levers in the back as well to help you do that quickly and easily. It's pretty good. The interior of the GV70 feels like its own special space. It doesn't feel like it's derivative of an Audi or a BMW or a Mercedes or anything like that. It definitely feels like Genesis has approached this with a clean sheet mindset. And you know what? It works really well. So things that I really like about it is that you've got, well, this beautiful material finishing across the entire dashboard, doors, seats, everywhere you touch, look and feel has a pretty high end uh, feel to it, I guess you'd say. Look, you've got this microfibery style headliner, for instance, in this grade, a nice leather steering wheel, red stitching here. You've got red stitching across here, red stitching on these blue seats. And yeah, that might not be for everyone, but it does have a striking effect when you sit in the car because Nobody else has done anything like that that I can recall. Um, maybe they have, let me know in the comments if I'm wrong, but um, also they've got this really nice approach to ambient lighting and design. Um, there's this shard look pattern on the doors with little red ambient light behind it, which is really cool. You've also got these material finishes here. They're like a metallic look. Um, they are kind of a little bit annoyingly finger smudgy and fingerprinty. Um, so this car looks dirty pretty soon after you sit in it, which is annoying. Um, and that same sort of tale can be told for this little screen here. So that's your climate control screen. So you've got your fan control, you've got your heating and cooling for the seats. You've also got your climate control dials over here as well. Um, so all of that is well, at least intuitive, but it is a touch screen um, and fingerprints. Same thing with this big 14.5 inch touchscreen media system up here. So if you don't want fingerprints on there, you can avoid that by using the rotary dial controller down here. There's a few quick keys there as well. So you can jump around pretty easily through the dial. Um, and even using the Apple CarPlay uh, phone mirroring technology is pretty simple using the dial. It's just, maybe not as ideal as it could be. And I mean, we've seen from the GV80, the bigger SUV in the Genesis range, it's gone from having this screen a bit too far away to having a bigger screen that spans the dashboard and it's a bit closer to the driver. So hopefully we might see that flow across to this model as well. But honestly, I reckon it does have some pretty nice wow factor to the cabin. It's also pretty practical. Um, you've got a couple of cup holders here. In here is where you'll find your wired Apple CarPlay, uh, well, that's where I've been keeping the cable. Uh, you've got a couple of USB ports in there. That's a wireless phone charger too in there. A covered center console bin as well with a 12 volt too. You've got bottle holders in the doors. So it does have the practicality stuff pretty well sorted as well. Some people love this big panoramic sunroof as well. So it does tick lots and lots of boxes. Quilted seats with massage function in this spec as well. We found the massage function, my partner and I, the other day, and it is good. It feels like you are sitting in one of those massage seats at the airport. So 
That's kind of neat for a car at this kind of money. You might have expected that in something a lot more expensive, but it's nice to see. Also, the passenger seat has this, I guess, I don't know what you'd call it. It's like you can control it from somewhere else. So if you need to move the seat forward, if you've got someone in the back seat, maybe you're driving it as a luxury vehicle, a hire car or something like that, you can adjust the seat tilt and seat slide of the electric passenger seat from controls on this side. So that's pretty nice to see. Now, the interior of the EV model, you'll see some shots of it now, really doesn't change that much. Um, in fact, it just has a few different menus and info displays that uh, make it a little bit different to the petrol versions, but it doesn't have a game-changing difference. And look, for some people, that's gonna be annoying because uh, a lot of people want their EV to look and feel different to the conventional version of the car. But then again, I see the other argument being pretty strong as well. Well, why would you want it to be different if the original is brilliant? So, tell me what you think. Would you prefer different or would you prefer the same? And now, let's check out the second row space. There's a couple of things I really like about the back seat of the GV70. The fact that I can fit behind my own driving position quite comfortably is one of the biggest ones. So, I've got enough knee room, head room up here, and also enough toe room too um, for me to sit behind my own spot. I'm 182 centimeters or six foot. So if you have taller kids or if you ferry adults around a lot, it's gonna be pretty accommodating if that is you. I also love the fact that you've got shades built into the windows in this spec at least. So that means that you can basically knock out a bit of sunlight from coming inside on hot days like today. So. There's also climate control in the back here as well. You've got heated seats for the three of them, in fact, uh, just for the base for the middle seat though, in this spec. A couple of USB ports. You've got mat pockets on the seat backs. Thankfully, you've also got these hard kick plates on the seat backs as well. Good for little kids. I had my daughter in here for the week with me most of the time when we were driving this car. Uh, she really liked this car. She thought it was cool because it had a big sunroof and she could put her feet right on the edges here. So um, yeah, it does have the child friendliness factor pretty well sorted, including ISOFIX points in the window seats and three top tether points as well. And if you need it, you've got a flip down armrest here with cup holders too. So that's good to see. It doesn't have a ski port, but I don't think that's a big deal really. And I do think that it does have a pretty practical back seat area. But just keep in mind, if you do plan to put three people in the back, there's quite a big transmission tunnel to contend with. So foot space might be at a premium, but otherwise it's nice. Now, obviously, under the bonnet of this particular Genesis GV70, we don't have an engine. In fact, we've got some nice storage section under here. So this is a covered frunk, uh, tire mobility kit, first aid kit in there. You could probably fit a couple of cables on top of that as well if you needed to. But that obviously signifies that this one is the electric model. It has a dual motor setup. So you've got an electric motor at the front and at the back axle, single speed transmission, and you'll see the power and torque figures on your screen now for this GV70 electrified model. It does 0 to 100 in just over four seconds. So this thing is not mucking around uh, and nor are the petrol versions to be frank. The entry level one is the 2.5 liter four cylinder turbo petrol, and it has a fair whack of power and torque and it's available with an eight speed automatic transmission and the choice of rear wheel drive or all wheel drive, as I mentioned. And then there's the 3.5 liter version. So it's the V6 turbo, it is very punchy. The V6 model also comes with an eight speed automatic transmission and it's all wheel drive as standard. And all of them are quick, like even the entry level petrol rear wheel drive four cylinder one is pretty quick, not to hundred. You'll see all the figures on your screen for the petrol models now. So if you are after a performance luxury SUV, this thing seems to tick the box, but we should talk a little bit more about the EV and when it comes to charging, what you need to think about. The charge port for the GV70 electrified model is in the grill, it's disguised, which is pretty cool. But I do wonder about if you were to have a low speed impact where you hit the back of someone, what would that mean? Would that mean a write-off for this vehicle? Because I imagine this section is not cheap to replace. Now, this is obviously the charge port section. So let's talk about charging first. Uh, you've got AC charging at a rate of up to 10 and a half kilowatts, which is pretty quick. Um, means you'll need 
three phase power at home if you want to get that full speed but uh, it's not too bad you'll see how long it's supposed to take on your screen now and if you happen to find a really really fast dc charger this car is capable of up to 350 kilowatt charging apparently i've never ever seen any product go to 350 kilowatts on a 350 kilowatt charger in Australia, but at least it has really fast charging, 10 to 80% in about 20 minutes. So that is properly quick. Uh, now it does have a lithium ion battery pack. You'll see the capacity of it on your screen now. And also it has a pretty decent driving range, but it's not mind blowing, just over 400 Ks. So Hmm, might not make a lot of sense to you. If you're spending 120 grand, there's lots of other EVs out there that have much more EV driving range. But is it good to drive? Well, let's go and find out. We'll start in the petrol one. Let's talk about the drive experience in the GV70. Okay, we'll start off in the petrol, then we'll jump to the electric afterwards. Now, specifically the 3.5 litre V6 turbo petrol, which is an absolute cracker of an engine. It has immense power and torque more than you'll need in runaround conditions like I'm driving in today. So it does have the effortlessness that you would expect of a big V6 petrol engine. Um, look, if you don't need that much engine, I can completely understand that. And I think you'd be more than happy with the four cylinder 2.5 T model, uh, whether it's rear wheel drive or all wheel drive, um, it makes a lot of sense um, considering that the cost is significantly more to get into this higher grade version but for what it's worth this one does have a fair bit of sting to it and yes i said sting it's the same engine as the stinger so sounds good goes good is good and yeah i really like this engine i like the eight speed automatic transmission as well and it does a mostly pretty good job although in sport mode at times it can just hang on to a gear for much 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 longer than you would expect it to you're sort of egging it on to shift up to the next one and it just doesn't uh, but look i haven't actually driven this car in sport mode all that much i've been sticking mainly in comfort mode because I've just been doing the usual stuff I do with a test car, driving around town, dropping my daughter off at daycare, that sort of stuff, and it's been comfortable. But if you do want to get sporty, you can, and the sport mode is good. Um, it does make things a little bit more hmm, unrelenting, let's say, when it comes to the comfort and control of the car, but if that's what you're after when you put it into sport mode, it's going to tick the box for you. But look, comfort mode just is a little bit more easy to live with. Um, you don't have to be quite as uh, thoughtful with the throttle application, for instance. And the steering is just a little bit looser and that makes it just a little bit more urban friendly because you're not darting quite as much. Either way, if you're buying the petrol version of this car, if you're buying the 3.5, you're getting a sporty, nice, livable, luxury SUV. And like I said, the 2.5 might make even more sense to you. I also like the brake pedal feel. It does have nice positive action through the pedal. Although interestingly, the version with the electric powertrain has a shorter stopping distance than the petrol versions. Another thing that is, well, it might take a little bit of getting used to is that when you change the drive modes or maybe you start to slow down from going a bit faster, um, the seats will adjust. So in this spec at least, the seats will relax themselves when you change drive modes or if you slow down or tighten things up and give you a bit more of a hug if you think you'll probably need it uh, in sportier driving scenarios. If you just put your foot down flat, it'll yeah give you a little bit of a hug around the edges. I like that. It's also got the luxury thing pretty well sorted when it comes to the refinement on offer. It's not too noisy in this car. It can be a little bit on coarse chip surfaces, but if you end up buying the version with 19 inch wheels, I do find that it is a little bit more hushed. So all in all, I'm impressed. I think that the GV70 petrol versions are good. What about the EV? Having spent a couple of days in the Genesis GV70 petrol models and then jumping into the electric version, I do prefer the way the petrol versions drive. And the reason for that is they don't feel as heavy. Uh, this car does feel heavy. It is quite a lot heavier. I'll put the figures on the screen now for you uh, so you can compare for yourself. But look, 
it still is quick obviously it's got electric motors it's got heaps more power and torque than the other models and it's also got a faster 0 to 100 time sure that's all well and good but uh, when it comes to just the hefty feeling of the car in corners in particular i do prefer the petrol versions but i do like the electric version when it comes to driving around town and if you do a lot of that then you will appreciate how smooth the electric powertrain is in comparison to those petrol models look the petrol ones are still pretty smooth but the electric version i mean it's seamless in the way that it behaves it doesn't muck around with getting power down or anything like that you don't have to think about gear shifts it just goes just put your foot down and it goes it's really really enjoyable in that aspect also it does have regenerative braking as you would expect and you can just activate it by holding down the left button if you want to come to a full stop just holding the pedal yep it does that and there is an eye pedal mode if you want to drive like in a single pedal manner so that means you'll theoretically not have to need to touch the brake pedal um, and a lot of ev drivers appreciate that but others find it a little bit sickening so make sure you try before you buy and you might find whether you like it or not all right let's talk about efficiency for this electric version of the gv70 um, you'll see on your screen now the official WLTP figure for combined cycle driving. So that's what you should be able to achieve across a mix of different driving scenarios. Um, and if you're wondering what I've seen over my time in the GV70 Electrified, you'll see that on your screen now. So yep, a bit higher than the claim, but um, not too bad for a dual motor electric vehicle with this much grunt. In fact, I was pretty impressed, really. Um, not as impressed with the petrol model. Let me tell you about that now. Now, on your screen, you'll see the official combined cycle fuel consumption figure for the 2.5 litre rear wheel drive and all wheel drive models. Yep, so a little bit of difference there. Uh, but then you step up to this higher grade V6 and it's a bit more marked, the difference between powertrains and efficiency. So, I mean, you're getting a lot more power and torque, but you're also getting a thirstier engine. And in reality, I've seen, well, higher than the claim. You'll see on screen what I saw over a week of testing of my normal sort of driving. And yeah, that's a little bit thirsty. The Genesis GV70 achieved the maximum five-star ANCAP safety rating not too long ago, but just keep in mind that the 3.5 litre V6 version didn't achieve that rating because it wasn't tested for whatever reason. But just rest assured, it does come with the same standard safety technology and equipment that the rest of the range gets, including autonomous emergency braking with pedestrian, cyclist, and junction detection. There's also active lane keeping assistance, adaptive cruise control, there's blind spot monitoring and a blind spot view camera system. So it'll show up if there's something in your blind spot on the digital instrument cluster, as well as rear cross traffic alert with auto braking for that functionality as well. And it really does tick the box when it comes to all that safety technology, apart from the fact that it's only if you choose the luxury pack that you get rear autonomous emergency braking. So really, in my mind, that should be standard. What I am happy is standard is front and rear parking sensors, and there's also a surround view camera on all grades of this car, which is really nice to see. And when it comes to airbags, you've got dual front, front side, driver's knee, front center, and full length curtain coverage for a total of eight, which is pretty good. If you decide that a Genesis is the right car for you, then you'll get a five year unlimited kilometer warranty. And if you choose the battery version, well, you end up with a longer warranty for the battery pack as well. You get five years or 75,000 kilometers of free servicing cover with this vehicle as well. And that means that the intervals are 12 months and 15,000 Ks across both the petrol and the electric version. So the electric ones are a little bit shorter than average, but you do get access to a Genesis concierge service. So someone can come and collect your car, take it away, get it serviced and bring it back to you. Or you can access a free loan vehicle when your car is in for maintenance. What is also a nice deal sweetener if you're choosing the EV model is that you get a choice of five years of free access to the ChargeFox network across Australia, which if you are close to one of those fast chargers that works, seems like a pretty good deal, or you can have a charging system uh, put in wherever you need it to. So whether it's home or office, you can get that installed at no cost. So it's either free charging or a free charger. 
I'm so glad that the Genesis GV70 exists because it offers something different to people who want something different. And that's the biggest appeal with this car. It isn't like much else out there. And it does things a little bit differently in the way that it approaches the powertrain options as well. Plus, it is so luxurious. It really does stack up from a few different perspectives. But what do you think? Would you buy one? Would you roll the dice on a Korean luxury brand? Or would you choose one of the more mainstream options? I'd love to hear from you. If you haven't already, please do like, subscribe, and hit the bell to keep up to date with all of my reviews. Plenty more coming, and I'll see you in the next one.